I mean, that Cavs team, that was probably their best chance ever to beat the Bulls, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um, I remember seeing it on uh, an antenna wherever I was. I remember where I was. I won't get into it. I wasn't at home, but I, I was watching on an, an antenna and it wasn't a clear signal. It wasn't clear that he had made it right away. He did. Um, fifth consecutive road elimination game won by the Celtics. Uh, the Celtics have done a lot of incredible things in the 76 year history of their franchise. That's not at the top, but it's on the first page. Uh, and give themselves a chance in doing so to make the history with the 3 potential 03 comeback. Um, and then the actual nature of the way this game played out, which I'm not so sure either team deserved to win because neither team played well, but I don't think either team really deserved to lose. And snatching it away from potentially iconic Jimmy Butler performance. Jimmy Mm -hmm. Butler was three of 19 with two minutes left to go in this game. Couldn't get off the floor from my vantage point. Um, Having a miserable game, not what we would expect from uh, his, you know, his incredible playoff uh, resume. And in the last two minutes and one seconds, well, I shouldn't say that for the next two minutes and one seconds, he scored 10 points um, and made three enormously clutch free throws with three seconds left. Um, and that went for naught. And Bob Temps is a lot more that happened. And I'll tell you a little bit what it was like in the Celtics locker room. I got in there right as uh, they were guys were watching the video for the first time. Um, but Bontemps, uh, you had a lot of other assignments and you were busy tonight looking at other things about this game too. Yeah. I mean, this just really was the Boston Celtics in a nutshell, this whole thing. I mean, they, they have, a, we talked all the time about how, they're 38 and two when they hit 40% of the threes. They literally had the worst shooting game of their entire season. They went seven for 35. They never made less than nine in a single game all year, but they fought and they played really hard. They played great defense. They shut down Bam and Jimmy, the whole game dominated the whole game. It was almost a carbon copy of game seven of the conference finals last year when they had a nine or 10 point lead with three minutes to go and then completely imploded exactly what they did again. Now, like, let Jimmy Butler score 10 straight points, fouling him on in ones, found him in the corner on three point shots. He was never going to make mm-hmm. and putting themselves in a position where it seems like their season's going to go down in flames, just like they were a week ago or whatever, five days ago. Right, who knows how many days it was at this point when they were down three Oh in this series. And then um, they turn around and Derek white, on a team full of big names, he's about the quietest guy on the team, just makes an unbelievably heady play to inbound the ball, cut right to the corner to be there if he needs to be an outlet to get a shot. And when Marcus Smart's shot went up, bolts right to the rim, doesn't ball watch, doesn't just is like, I'm going to make sure I'm in position to make a play, made the play of his life. And somehow we're sitting here talking about the Boston Celtics in game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not really sure how, but here we sit. Mm. Like, man, that's the Boston favorite. cockroaches, the Boston cockroaches. <laughs> I mean, in the most complimentary <laughs> sense, these dudes will not die. They just keep crawling out from, from underneath. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it, it was a miracle that Miami was in position to win this game. As poorly as Jimmy played for 46 minutes, as poorly as Adebayo played. I mean, the, the first half was Tatum just absolutely kicking Jimmy's ass up and down the court on both ends. Then he disappears in the second half. But they, you know, you still, it's... I, I I just as I was sitting there watching this saying, I can't believe Miami's going to win this game. And lo and behold, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, we had the same, we had the same conversation, me and Brian sitting there. I mean, when Jimmy's shot went in, I mean, 
as people know, we write these obits. I turned to Brian. Mm. I said, well, my obit's going to see the light of day now because it's been rewritten six times in these playoffs, I think. Mm. It's going to be seven. And now it's, well, it's at least seven. <laughs> it could be a lot more than that at this point. Um, that was just, it was just an unbelievable. I mean, that that was just why, I mean, games like that are just why the job is so great. I mean, this is why everybody watches sports. You go to these games, you go to all these games, and you just see stuff you've never seen before. And like, I mean, that was just, like you said it, McMahon, like it was a miracle that Miami was in position to close the series out. And then it took a miracle for them to lose it at the end I, on top of have it. Have you guys seen the win probability graph from this game? <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a super dorky thing, but it's green, 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 and high green, right? High yep. green all the way until whoosh, it whooshes down to 99% red. And then whoop, spikes right back, back to up to 100%. Green. <laughs> I have three letters for you all to consider. Oh, here we go, baby. Channel. Channel. <laughs> B P I. Back from the dead like the Celtics B themselves. I. <laughs> B P I. The math God, don't lie. It. Never mess um, with those nerds. Never doubt the nerds. <laughs> hey, what though? You know what? I used to say never doubt Jimmy Butler. And hey. We're zero for two on Jimmy Butler guarantees. Fool me once. Yeah, well, he, well, he made another on one. <laughs> Fool me, he made another fool one me twice. I lose your trust. Celtics winning this series, baby. I'm off the Jimmy Butler bandwagon. I know, I know, Bomb Tips will oh, never jump boy. off, but I'm off the Jimmy well, here, bandwagon. Well, here, He's let me down twice. Well, this so I'm a voter again for the conference finals MVP award. Oh, good but, God uh, Almighty, here we go. Well, no, well, no, but this. So Doris Burke texts me with. I don't know, nine minutes to go in the game. She's like, she's who are you voting for for MVP? Call, Doris here doing radio. I think she's got, I assume she's got a vote. Uh, text me and says, who, who are you voting for for MVP? I turned to Brian and said, I think I got to vote for Caleb Martin. As far as I was say. <laughs> and Brian was like, yeah, who else, you gonna, who else are you going to vote for? Because at this Jimmy point, was Jimmy three of 19. Was, he was, he was, he was, it's horrible, and, and then scores ten points in the last two minutes, and you well, think they're going to win? It's unbelievable. Well, I, By the way, right. Wendy, I got to give you credit. You called for the Caleb Barton uh, move in the starting lineup. He's the only reason that the Heat were able to stay within shouting distance. Him and then Duncan Robinson, and by the yeah, way, although about, Duncan missed oh, two, boy, man, he is going to be seeing the one was the test, the win. You know, you say that though, they still they took the lead. I know, but Duncan, too, oh, my God, clean looks from the wing where he thrives, you know, when he's going oh, thrives. Oof. Um, all right, so I was fortunate way, enough. To, oh, sorry, Bon Temps, your stats, what, 38 and 2 when the Celtics shoot 40% from three? Is that the stat now? They're 38 and 2 when they do, and they are now 30 and 31 when they don't. Mm, because that's not they the stat. To. They're okay. one and zero when they shoot twenty percent or worse. <laughs> that is true. That is the new stat. <laughs> yeah, they had their There's... worst three point shooting game of the year mm -hmm. by percentage and by makes both. Only and here seven we sit. Makes. Tatum, Tatum was on the podium afterwards, and he was like, "My God, we only made seven threes. And um, by the way, he and Jalen Brown um, they combined for fifty seven points in this game. No threes. None. No threes. But, That's but the Heat. Crazy. The Heat were about as bad in the paint. I know what I mean. Look, what they shoot in the paint? I said twenty percent. I wrote a piece a couple of days ago. I called this the Bizarro series. That's what this is. This is the Bizarro Conference Finals, and um, it's a Seinfeld reference. I stopped making Seinfeld references mostly because folks under the age of thirty don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Sorry, <laughs> the Bizarro. Um, so I was just the way things when I got into the Celtics locker room pretty much before anybody else after the game. Um, Chris Forsberg from uh, uh, um, Comcast Boston was in there too. Um, and the guys really hadn't seen the play yet. Um, and uh, Blake Griffin was like, he saw it. He like, he's like, I cannot believe how close it was. It was, it was closer mm -hmm. than they thought. And um, he showed uh, Derek White the, um, the replay. And Derek, I don't think Derek could see, he probably saw it on the scoreboard when he looked, but he hadn't like, had a chance to look at it and like reverse it and watch it. And so he watched it right there and he was with Grant Williams and, um, and Marcus smart. And they were, they were just marveling at it as they watched it. And then I showed him 
Wob, uh, Worldwide Wob, our buddy Rob Perez, he tweeted out a, a four box that showed all four, that showed four different angles of the play. One was like overhead, one was of the Celtics bench, one was of the Miami bench, and one was like from behind the play. Four different angles of it. And I handed Derek my phone and he watched that two or three times, reversing it and watching it back. And the one thing we were marveling at was that when Marcus put the ball up, um, he caught and turned and put the ball up. Derek was at the three-point line in the corner. Derek White inbounded the ball and he immediately cut to the corner because I guess that's where he goes on the play. Um, well, it was just a smart play to, to, uh, to relocate to a spot where he could be an option to get a mm-hmm. shot. It was just a, right. it was another part of a play that was really smart. Right. And I, and I saw some people, um, I saw some people saying that Max Struess like let the heat down because he didn't box out. Um, he didn't box out Derek White. Well, first off, I'm not 100% sure Max Struess was on Derek White. I think it might have been Gabe Vincent. Yeah. And- Gabe, Gabe doubled off onto Tatum. On the and it worked. They, they, they took away the first option, which was Tatum. They took away the second option, which was Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart was the third option. The Celtics or the Heat did a good job on defending that play. And Derek White's just really, really fast. And he got from Marcus Smart took the shot and he got from the three point corner to the rim in time to get the tip back. And it helped. Bontemps, you mentioned this earlier to me. The ball didn't come off like a long rebound. Mm-hmm. The ball rimmed out and came in and rebounded short. Cause and, and on the same side that Derek was crashing from and, and Derek didn't right. ball watch on the play. Like it was just really an alt, like just a super heady winning play all the way around by that's him. What because- it, if it had come out the other side, I think Tatum might've gotten the tip. He might have. I mean, they, yeah. Tatum was crashing hard too, but it just like, it might it, not, he might not have been fast enough. There he was just, made, there was just, it was just so much serendipity all the way around, which may, which is all the more insane when you look at the, the way the Celtics once again went into, as uh, one of our buddies likes to call it, prevent offense in mm. late in the fourth quarter. That Derek White put back was their last, the, the pro, last field goal before that was with four minutes and 58 seconds to go. That's in ridiculous. The game. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.